that snipe position just lets it see so much and cut off so many angles. Um, but Brian is very proficient on any of those backline weapons and, and does end up going for the X blow instead. Um, so we got a about... Zimmy. Yes, I was Sendu. talking about the bubble, and this is where uh, a bubble can definitely come into play. The mist can kind of take control of areas, slow members down from uh, trying to push you out of. Uh... Uh, holding basket and the bubble can just go underneath basket mini has the range to control that um yeah so very good here to see the mini already having a bubble ready to go we see crab ready to go it looks like uh one crab uh, the one crab got popped and we've got the battle in mid and it looks like one splash ended up going down the machine getting a really nice pick there uh on greats and it looks like two members down on the side of true squid and or else is get, trying to uh, move on forward but the carbon uh, attempted to make a stop and we see one other is just underneath the ledge here also trying to stall a push and I believe it succeeded so instead of or else being able to just mow right through the plot the carbon able to stall it uh, and another one uh, just keeping them back off the ramp before uh, before anything bad could have happened what a booyah bomb as well being thrown in behind looks like a pick did get to go down onto the machine there and just trying to find that mid control as uh, picks are going down left and right here Jim yeah, big scrap around this uh, purple side ramp. Um, there's a, a crab in place, just making it very difficult for or else to find a foothold. True Squid is backed up, but they're backed up into strong defensive positions, and it is di very difficult to dislodge them from here. So a bit of a stalemate for the time being. Um, they need to get a little bit more of an advantage and actually push that if they're going to get much further past mid. Uh, mid is a very dangerous and difficult area to traverse on this map. Uh, lots of threats from high ground that you'll have to deal with. They've got that crab tank that we're firing Azuka at and then we cut away from just for the suspense of the thing. We've got this fight going on over this ledge here, which again has to be cleared in order for the area of ramp to be safe. But True Squid are able to get enough control to push up the ramp and get a ball in. And it looks like they've cleared it pretty significantly. They've got an explo push really far up here. So this could be a strong position. There are all the clams coming in all at once. I was going to say, mm -hmm. with that many players cleared out, that has to be a really big scoring push for them. It looks like they ran themselves all out of clams and they've lost a player in the process. So I don't think they're going to be able to push in for any more than this. But they have at least been trading back to even so far. And uh, or else is still not going to have a massive foothold on the map for being able to repel them for now. Being able to push up that far and even getting the Expo up, uh, Expo's really good at controlling that area because you can bob over snipe up on the top corner, mark them just to help uh, your front lines get those picks in return. And uh, just opting to move back when they did, realizing like, hey, we don't have any more clam economy. We're not close to any more, taking back the top mid there and um, just allowing the rest of the team to just regain themselves. but. Uh, or else here it looks like they are getting caught again being pushed back into their base as uh, True Squid has the power clam they use a couple specials we saw the carbon try to push in there it looks like the basket is broken yet again the explo and, ev and the rest of uh, True Squid were together on the bottom corner Splash trying to find that one pick in the corner they did manage to jump out in time so even though the basket was broken uh, uh, point uh, they didn't quite get through penalties so they weren't they weren't able to get any more points on the board, but this crab in a nice spot on the grate, able to get that lob shot over on uh, the side there. And it looks like uh, members of or else able to open up the basket and they could, uh, they don't have any clams at the moment, but they have two down and a really good opportunity to retake lead here. They have the bubble out that they can just jump to. A couple more clams, which it looks like that they do have. Gonna jump in with the power. They're probably going to score that one too. Yep, and that is lead for them. Two members finally going down. And uh, there's the third with the mini just being left alive, opting to back out. We're a minute left into this game. And uh, what a very good solid push by or else there. But True Squid knows that they have this minute left. You can see that two of them were already trying to retake mid. Machine able to pick one. But uh, Benny with a nice follow up there <laughs> to pick off the X blow. And uh, this is now a battle for mid as True Squid just wants to keep up the pressure so they can get this push off before overtime hits. I really love the pressure from Benny. Benny's coming from off angles pretty much every time there. They're dropping in from the right side plat to get behind the enemy team when they're trying to push. Benny then on the push went up onto the left side bridge to pop crab from there and draw aggro. Um, they've been applying a lot of annoying pressure 
that has either got them picks or got the enemy team to look at Benny and allowed the team to push forward. And that is the way that you have to play this map. It's very linear unless you take those one or two flank routes that the game does afford you and Benny taking those and allowing them to get the lead. But, oh my goodness, this is so one close. Clam. One, one, the but difference they need two clams is to lead, one though. clam, and I don't think they have it. They are not close enough to the basket. Oh, the basket will close with that one clam advantage. They still needed to. Add, they actually needed to score two to take lead because one would have tied. Uh, so they had to take. They had to score two in order to take lead. It was that close, and uh, they had it secured there. And uh, what is it? The mini had the. They were the last one alive. They bubbled in front and just kind of tried to maintain space until they couldn't and uh, definitely stalled for a good amount of time to let the rest of uh, the team come back in, and they managed to get the defense just in time to stop the one with those two clams to take the game. Incredibly, incredibly close, and uh, I'm excited to see how the rest of this set goes, if that's the way that the rest of the games are going to be. Um, so really good e examples there, I think, of how to play uh, Scorch Gorge in, in terms of map positioning. Um, you get, you know, the main body of your push going up the right ramp, but you get someone going over on the left-hand side, some fast frontline weapon that can distract, or maybe a crab tank or something to get the opponents forced to look both ways, to decrease the uh, ability of that high ground on the top right to be able to control the basket, since you also have to deal with what else is in your base. Um, and you use that, um, that drawing of aggro to get your power clam in and try to seize control of the area around and in front of the basket. Um, it is tricky in clam blitz, and I think clam blitz is very well designed because if you go any further past the basket, now you're on the low ground. Now you're on this area mm -hmm. that's a little bit harder to hold. Um, there's high ground area all around it at that point. Um, and so the defenders have the ability to just stay up on the high ground if they want to for the most part, and they still have ready access to the basket, at least from that left-hand side. It is a little bit trickier when you're able to get control of their plat area there, because once you get control of that, then it's hard. There's no high ground that on that right hand side that they can take to use against the basket, and that's when you can start attacking that high ground on the right. Um, so you got to kind of got to zigzag forward when you're trying to push into their base on that map. Um, and we go straight back to Splat Zone's Mako Mart. How, how mm -hmm. many times do you think we're going to see this as a uh, round two counter pick today? Because <laughs> that's exactly even, what we saw last time. Even just if it's not even a game two, I can just see it just being a, like a, just a counter pick throughout most uh, most games in general. That and uh, TC Inkblot. I was going to say uh, with the True Squid, they have a solid amount of pressure with the with the buckets there. And of course, just trying to initiate uh, Brian with the X blow and then follow up with the machine. Zones Mako, even though it's like a common pick, I would say honestly works for this team as well as it does. Mm -hmm. <laughs> because of the, uh, like all of the different lobby you can do, um, how much they can control the zone with these, uh, with the arc shots and just having the, uh, the other two come around on the other side of the angles, which we've, uh, been seeing do so we've seen uh, we've seen Benny do a lot of flanks as well to help or else uh, win their fights and um, I'm curious to see what they're what uh, or else is going to bring here if it's going to be a similar comp if they're going to bring uh, something different here yeah I, my thinking here is that this is a carbon deco map <laughs> um, you know if if you're gonna run there one of the 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 strongest carbon rollers in the West. Like this is a map that they have to like looking at this. So mm -hmm. I'm looking at this like, mm, this may not be as, as neutral as we think it is for that reason. Although we are seeing the double bucket comp and that is something that is going to work really well on this uh, map mode as well. And that might be another reason that we're going to uh, see this map a lot in the tournament because that has been a very popular combination so far, but Right now, True Squid taking full control here. Um, a couple of picks by the Carbon Deco, letting them get in there. So no surprises there. I think that uh, this is definitely playing into Volti's strengths. Um, so with Brian on the right stack trying to help lock out um, and a Crab Tank on the way, this is a really good position for them to be in. Uh, Volti does finally go down 
Uh, but they've been able to get a pick in the meantime, so they should hopefully be able to hold in time for Volti to get back in there. Uh, but we see Banana poking around on the right-hand side here, maybe trying to dive in there. No, not going for anything cheeky. Looks like they're going to push out from left-hand side like they traditionally will. They're biding their time for a while, though. Only 15 ticks left, and they're still back in their own base. Do they even have time to get to the zone at this point? Not with Volti stopping someone right there. I think this is already over. 0-100 to mm -hmm. 100 for True Squid. Oh, no. Or else just did not leave their base. They, what is it? They had a good, uh, they got the first initial zone cap at the start and took some space, but then True Squid showing their uh, true nature, haha, and uh, just able to, you know, ledge control, followed up on every, every kind of like entry point from spawn to zone. They shifted around and just tag teamed with all that poke. And you said that the, that uh, or else was kind of like taking their time and all that. They weren't exactly taking their time. It's that they continuously had two down uh, True Squid was just picking them off and they couldn't actually have the whole team together. I think they were trying to wait to have that moment for the whole team together, but uh, True Squid just kept picking at least one to two off not long after each other, so they really didn't have the momentum to push back in. Just uh, True Squid just locked out, like I said, locked out every area. They had a, a special to counter something that they were trying to throw, and um, there was really no way... For o or else to uh, go back in at that stage because they uh, just kept getting kind of stuck from how much pressure was in the corners. Yeah, th that can kind of happen on that map. If you let the opponents get around on that left-hand side into your base, um, you, you're you really locked out for a while because that left side is the primary way that teams like to push out to reclaim their own left stack first and then to be able to use that stack as a foothold to be able to take the zone. Um, the right side, a little bit more dangerous, uh, puts you a little bit more exposed, a little bit more open to high ground positions, either from the enemy team being on your left stack, or if you try to go the right court side from the enemy team being on the right stack and looking down at you. So typically teams will prefer to come in from the left because it's less visible and they get to cover sooner. But that means you had to push Volti out. And mm -hmm. they did eventually get Volti once, you know, half the time had ticked down, but then they still had to deal with the X-Blow on the stack. They still needed resources to push that out of position, and they just did not get those resources. They kept going one or two down, not really being able to make the play. And so just really dominant, dominant game there from True Squid. Um, so let's see where the counter pick ends up going. Um, we've seen, you know, what True Squid is kind of thinking. They're just trying it's to already maximize. It's already known. It's already known. <laughs> it's, uh, it's, I, it's not about the thing. Not they're going. Right. They're going to TC Museum. Um, okay. Is where they're going to uh, to go there. I know it hasn't uh, quite shown up on the mainstream yet, but they have picked TC Museum, and uh, I was just like, maybe they might bring out a a, a TC uh, counter pick here because I know a lot of teams do like to uh, they put. I, I mean, it says museum on on uh, the main, but that the stream says brine water. Yeah. There we go. There's museum. Okay. Anywho, <laughs> this the, there's the TC museum, but uh, I think what is it? Similar comps are probably gonna uh, stay. Yep. Just opting to keep the same thing on the side of True Squid. Uh, the stamper. Uh, showing up here for or else, and the uh, the Zimmy still opting to stay. The Zimmy can also paint relatively well. It has the bubble for protection. It can really guard these ramps. Uh, also really good for tower riding. Can put mist on the tower and just kind of help in those team fights to stop some of the quicker uh, frontliners. So it can stop the carbon. Can locate it even. Uh, just can throw a mist down. Can kind of locate it because it makes that little that little noise when someone's trapped in mist. And uh, banana there just. Uh, just jumping out with the, the little bit of not uh, they almost went down there but good jump out and we saw the mini putting a bubble in the corner trying to maintain space but the carbon here just trying to go after didn't quite get the pick but did get the pick with the Igzuka though what a shot it is really interesting to see the bubble weapons specifically coming out in more mm -hmm. force in the, this uh, this kind of new meta that we've created here for the sake of this tournament because uh, without sh as many shooters, there's just less DPS on the board. 
So the bubble is going to last a lot longer, even if the opponents are going to focus it down as much as they usually do. Zip coming in from Banana to try and get something going here. They do manage to stall it for long enough. Uh, one thing that's really important to notice about the Zips is not just the picks they get, but also the amount that they distract the enemy team. Because the enemy team is often going to have to devote two or three members to turning around to dealing with that, to getting it off their vulnerable backline members. And in doing so, they're sacrificing a lot of space in mid. And so if the rest of the team pushes up with the Zipcaster, that's when you really get the value out of it. That's when you actually see those Zipcaster plays having a huge impact on the way that a tournament set's going to go. Banana has caught on to Brian and does find him and is able to zip back. Is that going to be safe? Uh, looks like they were able to land safely and True Squid going three down here. So we're probably... Oh no, but Volti is not letting the tower get picked up. Volti is still on oh a rampage. Gosh. Volti takes out two in a 1v3 and now all of a sudden True Squid has the advantage. That just with the things the carbon can do, it'll just it will fight till its end. And we can see Volti just did not let up there using the burst bomb and the flicks to its advantage. We see the mini has this carbon lock, but the, the, the Medi with going right around the back and picking off the mini. Uh, and unfortunately, the mini could not stop Volti. What a what a save there. Uh, to help keep Volti in the game, we see the machine going to take the tower. Volti is up on the plat with the Zuka. Looks like they finally got picked off. And uh, uh, one for one trade there, but we see that there's burst bombs coming around left and right. And there's still a good amount of paint on the plat uh, in uh, True Squid's favor. And uh, they have a lot of control of Orelsa's plat right now. The crab in the way. Um, they have the tower continuously to go. Carbon does have Zuka, and there's a Booyah Bomb at the ready as well. Just lots of pressure being put out here by True Squid. Great capitalization on True Squid by that massive play from Volti there. You know, Volti staying alive for such a long time, taking up so much space, taking out so many enemy players. And because of all of that, even though Volti ends up going down, the rest of the team gets back in, creates a foothold, and Volti is able to jump back into that and is still popping off a triple for Volti. Only one player out in front. And you have to think that True Squid is going to be able to push through to the KO. Or maybe not. Banana and uh, the machine able to hold it off for the time being. Looks like they did actually regain control of their plat. I'm commentators cursing everything today. You really are. I'm just like, it's not over. They, ha they have a good spots here. I think they can defend this, and which they did. They were able to catch out on one, and you can see that uh, the machine and the stamper there were trying to control ramp, but the machine ended up dropping, uh, which put them in a uh, in kind of a bad spot there. So they weren't able to get the pick off. They were managed to get the pick. That definitely would have worked out a bit better for them. Uh, the stamper just could not help that fight being uh, looking the other way at another fight in return. But already, just as soon as that fight went into True Squid's favor, now they are back in control. You can see just how fast they pushed up. And okay, there's your, your, there's your KO. There's <laughs> your KO. Don't celebrate too soon, Jeff. <laughs> you know the consequences. <laughs> wow. Um... I, w I will say, I feel like um, Or Else's comp in that round was just maybe a little bit lacking in aggression. Um, they almost had a little bit of the same problem that we were seeing earlier, where there was just nobody to actually create space and push out. Um, they were getting a bunch of picks when True Squid was pushing up, because obviously, you know, being on that plat, not always the safest place to be. But when they got those picks, they were never able to really push that far into mid. Um, it felt like as soon as they dropped over a ledge, all of a sudden they were getting sharked or something. They didn't really have someone who wanted to drop off that ledge. They didn't have somebody who was going to be able to dive in around those corners. It felt like Benny was playing maybe a little bit more around the crab tank, and that just gave them nobody to, to suss those angles out, nobody to turn around those corners and look for where Volti might be hiding. Um, so Volti definitely popping off on that round. I would have loved to see the KAs there. They were probably pretty impressive. I um, too, yep. But uh, that's a little bit unfortunate for or else there because that was their counter pick going over to True Squid. So now even if or else is going to win game four, counter pick advantage has been turned over to True Squid. If or else were to win this and send it to a game five, the last game is going to be on a map decided by True Squid. And you have to think 
they're picking something that Volti is going to like. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, that Volti had a lot of control that game, and uh, or else just couldn't really uh, control it. They had a couple opportunities where they could have, but uh, just kind of put in the corner. They didn't get that pick that they needed, and another member of True Squid was able to follow up to help out Volti uh, to stay alive even when they were in a tricky situation. So they really need something to be able to keep uh, the carbon known, uh, keep it back, and you can see they picked uh, they picked Splat Zones Hagglefish here, which is more of the um, the longer wide open space. So I can see um, the uh, the Splatling being able to do some more here because uh, there's not too many things a carbon can lurk under. Yes, there are the wings, and if you do go too close, like a, a roller can pick you off from underneath. But there's a lot more uh, open room for the mid range here, which can benefit or else's team comp. Um, compared to the uh, the two buckets that um, True Squid has, so with the extra kind of just range shot, uh, straightforward, uh, they should be able to control mid a bit better. Yet with the with the comp that they have, which they are keeping, both mm -hmm. comps staying the same. And with the carbon roller, of course, you know that carbon's not going to be painting very much. So maybe part of the idea here is, well, we know they're going to bring one of those. Let's just bring four painting weapons and not paint them on the zone and mm -hmm. not let them get close enough to do anything. Uh, that might be kind of the idea here. Looks like we do actually have the, the wiper trying to flank and uh, cover that angle. Volti actually going to go across the zone and just gets eaten up by the crab tank. And there is the map playing out exactly the way that Devi was anticipating. That mm -hmm. open ground, just a little bit too much for Volti to be able to cross. They're able to shred that booyah, and now Or Else is in a more comfortable position than they've been in a while in any of these games so far, uh, besides game one. They've got a Booyah ready to go. They've got a Zip Caster ready to go. One does go down, two goes down. This Booyah actually going to have to get used defensively. And they actually do retake immediately, an immediate blitz from True Squid to rush in and take the zone off of those few picks. Uh, it is going to fall on or else with a comp like this to be able to stay alive to control their, their space. Because as soon as one player goes down, the rest may go down like dominoes if they're not careful. They've got to be very disciplined with their positioning, uh, especially when they're going to try and push past the zone. And pushing past the zone here is very dangerous. There's a lot of space in front of the zone to occupy before you can reach any cover. So it can be tricky to push forward any further past the zone if you're not quick about it. But now True Squid has got a strong lockout going on. One player does go down. Booyah thrown on zone just to help try and neutralize it. They are going to be able to cap very quickly off of that fizzy bomb. And so, or else staves them off for now. But that was a really uh, dangerous looking push there. True Squid was able to put out, you know, 80 points. That's something that'll knock out if they do that again. Yeah, the uh, overall True Squid has a better uh, lockout comp, while Or Else has a better, more of a space comp. But it looks like two ended up getting picked there, one up front, one off the side there. And as soon as uh, True Squid initiates those specials, they always get that one pick that I find, and then it just kind of falls down from there because the others aren't expecting it, and uh, or they expect it but just kind of get stuck. And that just initiates this team right here. Volti is just able to move right in, get that burst bomb for the finishing pick. And then the rest of the follow-up, they even got the Booyah Shred with everyone's help. Volti oh, going man. insane right now. Once enabled past mid, I know you said how like pushing up can be dangerous here. But on this map, Volti actually has the advantage underneath the ledges when they are in more of an uh, offensive playstyle here. And uh, just being able to push up full forward here because the x -Blow can just cover ground and everything they do have the crab at the ready they managed to do pick one off it looks like this counter crab is going to push the other one off we're going down to the final ticks here but it looks like uh volti is still underneath hiding stalling out uh benny here but they are able to pick off volti and they should be able to reclaim this cap but they opted to try to go for a pick instead i think they did actually get the cap because the penalty happened i didn't see it but uh jumps coming back here and um bubble is on the corner just to make sure that or else can kind of Stay forward here so the carbon can't uh, break through again and they are just trying to hold the best they can even though there we go the carbon moving in really well with that booyah bomb and just taking no hesitation whatsoever just knows how to uh, take these fights we can see they're throwing the burst bomb foot first and finishing it off with the flick uh, Brian there to get the cap and just uh, again just carbon enabled and the rest are following up uh, really well here this is the power of having a one trick on that carbon 
So you can see they know the ranges that they can hit those combos from. You can see that they know all these tricks for how to get in using the smoke screen of the Booyah Bomb. And it looks like they have capitalized on that. Only seven ticks left. It's going to be hard for or else to make it back onto the zone. I think True Squid have done it. They have educated us on the true definition of what it means to be a squid in more ways than one here. And they will be moving on with a 3-1 victory over or else into the semifinal round, the winner's semifinals.